Welcome to Jakarta E10 feature by feature. Uh, we have 50 minutes and I have a lot of stuff to show and I actually have a surprise demo as well planned. So let's just get to it. My name is Ivo Grimstad, I'm the Jakarta E developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. Uh, I'm a Java champion and I'm involved in a bunch of uh, other communities uh, such as uh, the local Java user groups in Malmö in, in Sweden. And, and you can see the Twitter and everything there. Uh, I'll, I'll distribute the slides afterwards. So everybody's waiting for EE10. And uh, it's still not there yet. We're getting there. We're getting closer. Uh, we're almost ready to start the kind of the final release packaging of the platform. But we still have some small issues left with the TCKs, the test suites for for the, the profiles, I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about the, them later. But right, right now, it looks like sometime in August should, we should be able to ship uh, EE10. And uh, when we talk about Jakarta EE, we talk about specifications. And I'll just do a short recap here of what a specification is. And uh, in, in our case, we, we, it is a specification document or some sort of documentation. It could be Java doc, it could be something else, but it's usually a, doc, a HTML or PDF document you can read so that is human readable. And it's also an API that you use, can use to program against. So, so a, a jar file you would typically download from Maven Central. And we have these test suites or TCK, test compatibility kit, that we use to verify that this uh, specification is implementable. And we do that by having a, an implementation that implements the specification. And we run the test suite against it. And as long as we have at least one open source implementation, we can ratify and what we call a final specification. And then we can, we can let others also implement it. And so we can have multiple compatible implementations. And they can be closed source, commercial, open source, or, or something. But there has to be at least one open source implementation. And Jakarta E10 is a lot of specifications, a lot of updates. All the blue boxes here are updates since E9. Uh, actually, also since E8, since 9 didn't uh, really bring anything other than the namespace change. But uh, as you can see, uh, most of the boxes are blue. That means that uh, they are updated since last version. The one with a uh, dot one behind the, version, uh, the specification name are minor updates. So they are uh, backwards compatible with previous versions. The, the uh, one with the zero behind are major updates, and they may introduce some changes that uh, you have to, to figure out uh, in order to, to, to run uh, if you have an older application and want to upgrade to these versions. I'll go through some of these uh, uh, in this talk. And uh, if we take away these on the left side that are more uh, let's call it enterprisey or, or something, uh, and, and just focus on the, the, the more web targeting applications, Th those you would use to create a typical web application. We have the Jakarta web profile, and the web profile has been with us since uh, EE6. So, so it's not a new thing, but as you can see here, it, it gets a lot of updates, and it gets some additions here and there, and, and the new spec in web profile for this release is concurrency. That used to be a part of platform, but we now moved it into web profile. So, so that is a new spec in web profile, as well as the CDI Lite, which is a, a brand new spec, is also a part of uh, web profile. And if we take away the, the, the specs that are focusing on uh, user interfaces and the traditional web applications, we uh, have a stack of specifications that are targeting smaller runtimes uh, or, or RESTful endpoints or microservices, if you like. And that is the brand new Jakarta EE core profile. And the core profile is, as I said, targeting smaller runtimes. It's not for UI, it's for services, for, for RESTful endpoints. And I'll go into a little bit of detail of core profile later as well. With 10, we are raising the Java level from 8 to 11. And that may seem like a, a little, because why aren't we on 17? Because, I mean, everybody's using 17 nowadays, and, and we're fast approaching 21, which is the next LTS release. But what we're doing here is to make sure that the test suite, the TCK, runs with 11 and 17. So you can use 17 if you want with 10. And, and we actually 
have it as a requirement in order to release E10 that we have an implementation that passes on 17 and 11. And, and uh, if we're honest, between 11 and 17, there aren't that many changes that are actually something that we would use in the APIs anyway, so it's perfectly fine to compile them to 11. And that means you can also, you don't have to go further than 11 if you want to use 10. Uh, but the important thing is we are uh, testing it for 11 and 17. So let's go into uh, look at some of the specs. I, I won't go all, all of them, but uh, the first one I'll look at is uh, security. And uh, security is a major update. That's because they're, they're uh, uh, ad adding some new stuff and, and also deprecating some, some other things. Uh, so they're doing a major update. And, um, the focus for this release was, was just to evolve the API and go a little further. And, and uh, what they're doing now is to add OpenID Connect as an authentication mechanism. And that means you can have used OpenID Connect for Jakarta EE before, but now it's a standard way, it's portable across uh, application servers, and you as an application developer can do the configuration, and it's fairly easy to set up. And, uh, and uh, the other updates to this specification were uh, sort of lower level stuff that needed to be done, plumbing, if you like, uh, in order to get OpenID Connect to work, and also uh, to create a foundation for future work so we can add other stuff later. So OpenID Connect is, is the big thing in security in this release. And it would look something like this. There are more uh, uh, properties you can set, but these are, are kind of, you set the provider and some secrets and stuff, and, 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 and you can also use expression language in these uh, properties uh, to, to have it fully configurable in any way you want. But uh, the, the very neat and nice annotation open ID authentication mechanism definition is the annotation you use. Luckily, we have code completion in the IDE, so we don't have to remember that name. So, persistence. Persistence are also adding features and, and evolving the API. And one of the things they are adding is support for UIDs. And, and you may have used UIDs before, but you have to, uh, may have done this mapping yourself. Now it's uh, supported by the standard, so it's portable across the implementations. And uh, this is an example of how you can use it if you use it for uh, your primary key. Whether that's a good idea or not, that's up to you to, to define, but uh, you can use it in other fields as well. But uh, uh, as you can see, you can use uh, Java Util UID directly in your entity. RESTful Web Services. They are also have a focus on maintaining compatibility because they planned a 4.0 release where they wanted to go full in on CDI. But they are still keeping the old stuff in order to maintain compatibility. But they also update the API with some requested features from the community. And one of them are support for multi-part uh, multi form data. So you can uh, upload files through the APIs now. And you may have done that before using REST DC or Jersey, but um, now we can do it in a standard way and just switch uh, implementations underneath. The other thing they, they're adding is uh, the Java SE Bootstrap API. And that means that you can run a Jakarta REST application without an application server. You can just run it java-jar. And this I'll actually uh, run a quick demo for. And what I'll do is uh, something like this. I'll just have a, a REST endpoint with a JSON binding uh, to generate some JSON output. And I'll run it from the um, uh, command line. Let's open this in the IDE. And I have this application here, it's called Bootyduk. And uh, what it has is, uh, first uh, you can see it's a jar. So it's not a war. And uh, it has a, a, a Maven plugin to generate a, a jar. And then I have some dependencies there. And the dependencies I have is the Jakarta REST API. And then I'm adding REST easy as an implementation. Because now I'm not in an application server, so now I need this implementation. Uh, dependencies. If I were on Jersey, I would, I would pick the counterparts for Jersey, but th these are the minimum you would need for, for JSON output through a REST API with uh, REST easy. And uh, that's the REST easy core, the, the web server, and, and the JSON binding provider. And the application is uh, I have this uh, simple hello endpoint that just says uh, how the Jakarta REST will the services. It does n uh, nothing uh, weird here and uh, produces uh, application JSON. 
And I have this uh, complete uh, Duke application, which is actually the, the, the Buddha Duke application. I just haven't renamed the, the class. But this is my application class. This is the configuration for, for Jakarta REST. So if I wanted to, to do this, and this is how it would be if I deployed it into an application server. So if I want to do this in a, in, in a jar, I need a, a, main, main, uh, a main class. And that means I have to create probably static uh, uh, void main. So now I've done that. So now I have a, a entry point for, for my application. And the, the next thing I, I want to do is to uh, do some configuration. And what I'm doing here is to, to uh, set up a, a sort of minimal configuration for uh, the SE bootstrap. So, so I'm setting the root path, the port, and that's about it. You can, you can also configure a lot of other stuff here, but this is kind of the bare minimum. If I leave out the port, it will take a default port. The next thing uh, uh, I need to do is to create the application, and that's very simple. I just instanti instantiate myself. So th this is the, the, the complete Duke application. And then the third thing I, I need to do is to start the application. And what I do here is I, I call the, the static method start on SE Bootstrap. I pass in the app config, uh, app and config, and then uh, uh, just wait until I, I had Control C. So, so it's, uh, it's um, a, a fairly simple application here. I have to get just add the interrupted exceptions and some doing that. So if, if I want to, to uh, and, and then I'll, I'll run this. So let me go to the other tab here. Uh, Booty Duke, Maven, clean package. So, so I'll, I'll create the, the, uh, the, the jar. And then I'll just run Java dash jar target uh, Booty Duke with depends this jar. And it starts up, it runs on, on port 8081. So let's go to the browser. AD81, boot it up, and beef it up, and you can see it, it runs fairly quickly. So this is a very easy way to set up a, 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 an application using uh, uh, Java SE Bootstrap in Jakarta REST without uh, an application server. The next I'm going to look at is actually the, the entire core profile. And, and, and core profile is targeting smaller runtimes. And with smaller runtimes, we mean uh, runtimes that are able to, to uh, that, that don't have to implement more specification than the, the ones uh, I'm showing here. So it's a kind of a minimum of, of specifications. And, and these runtimes are, are uh, typically possible potential core profile compatible application servers are Helidon, Corcus, Micronaut. Uh, I know also some of the more traditional, like, like LastFish and Open Liberty, probably also will be core profile compatible. But these are the kind of runtimes we're targeting with this, and the CDI Lite is the key to this. And, and, and the key around CDI Lite is that we want to design CDI to work in more restricted environment, or smaller runtimes, if you like. And we also want to provide the, the possibility to compile to native. And that means we have to change the dynamic stuff in CDI, because it's very much happening there at startup of your application or, or at deployment time. So, so what we want to do is to, to make CDI able to do that at compile time. And that means to, to create a new extensions API. So if you're using uh, CDI extensions today, you know that th they are kind of loaded when you load the application. But now we have to kind of define and figure out that stuff at, at uh, build time so we can compile to native. We're also changing the behavior of, of Beans XML. So if you're relying on an empty Beans XML, meaning all, you may have to change something in your application uh, to, to uh, uh, make it mean annotated. And, and that is uh, something I'd like to demo here, uh, just show very quickly. Uh, and if I take this uh, Buddhaduke application here, and I, uh, I, I change it to be a war, And I take the, the dependencies I have, and rather than, than having the um, uh, Jakarta dependencies, I, uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, RESTful only, I'll, I'll add the, the web API, and I'll actually add 10. We'll, we'll go to 10. 
And, and w w when I added this, I'll also add uh, the scope uh, provided. When I add this, I, I don't need any of these anymore. So, 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 so this thing can go. So, so my POM file is, is much simpler. Um, what, what I, uh, if I wanted to, to, to demo this kind of uh, Beans XML uh, feature with an empty, uh, because I don't have a, a Beans XML here, that means I have an empty Beans XML. That means that it's annotated. Previously, I could just add a, a, a class here. Uh, let, let's call it uh, Dux service. And uh, let's just uh, let this one have a public, uh, I'm sorry, Dux greeting record. Uh, hello. And let's uh, return new Dux screen record, and there should be a uh, high there. And sorry, a uh, local date time uh, now, like this. So uh, semicolon. There we go. So 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 now I created a, a simple bean that just returns a a, a greeting record. And if I wanted to, to use this one, uh, I can just inject it here. Uh, in in. Uh, service, Dix service. There you go. Uh, I see that I haven't, I haven't uh, reloaded the POM file, so I just have to go there and reload this. So this should be possible to find like this. So, so what I'm doing now is, is, uh, and I, then I'll, I'll use this Dix service, uh, hello, rather than and, and return this. So, so what I'm doing now is just inject the do service and, and, and call that method. And this would work in, in uh, EE9, because I don't need a bean XML, everything is injectable. But if I t try to deploy this one to, to for example, uh, Wildfly, uh, there, e booty duke. Let's look at it. You can see it, it fails. And 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 it uh, throws a lot of of um, should should at least uh, if I deploy it now, you can see it it will fail, and and it will uh, no it, it won't fail uh, when I call it but uh, when I when I do the the uh, actual call to the method and it's called booty booty do hello you can see I get an er error because it it won't be able to to uh, to invoke this for me. And, and it will throw a lot of, of uh, uh, ugly exceptions. So, so uh, what, what I can do to, to fix this is to, to make this Duke's service annotated, or I can add a Beans XML. So, so if I add an annotation and call this, for example, request scoped, it, it should work fine. There it, it, it should, should work fine. So, so, so you can see it, 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 it is, has a little bit of change behavior, and that's a breaking things in CDI4, the empty beans XML. If you haven't beans XML and you are using it today, uh, you can just go on as you use it. I'll, I'll show the, uh, some, some extensions to API uh, later. What I want to do also is to do uh, some, some uh, uh, show you how to get from E8 and forward. So I'll go all the way from E8 to E9 and then to E10. I could, I could do one of these steps or, or, or two of them, but uh, 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 how many are on, on E8 or previously? Planning on going to, to E9 or 10? Not that many, yeah. What, do you want to see the, the, how to get from, from uh, E8 to 9? Um, that is, the, of course, the, the, the main thing there is the namespace change. And you're probably aware that we changed the namespace from Java X to Jakarta. And w why should you care if you're not using Jakarta E? Well, if you're using Spring, Jetty, Tomcat, Hibernate, or something else, you, you're probably going to be affected by this anyway, because they're using Jakarta underneath and they are moving to the Jakarta namespace. So if you have some of this exposed in your code, you're going to do this. So you may like it or not. You, c you can do the transformation, which is, uh, uh, there are a couple of tools out there. The Eclipse Transformer and Apache Tomcat migration tool are some tools I know about. And, 
and these are doing the transformation for you on bytecode level. So you can take your, your E8 or Java X based application and just throw them through this tool and it will produce bytecode with the Jakarta namespace. That's convenient, but it's not uh, so cool as a demo. So you can also use the, the IDE. And, and uh, IntelliJ has some good support to migrate from the Java X to the Jakarta namespace. And, and it will take only the classes that you actually need. You can see it doesn't affect the usage of a Java SQL, Java Swing, or, or, or the other that are still on the Java X namespace. Or you can do it manually. And, and on my webpage, I have this uh, tutorial you can go through. It's a six step just to verify that your application is, is going through it. So, so I'll, I'll go through this. Uh, with, the, with an, uh, a sample of application very quickly, just go through the, uh, these steps and, and explain uh, while I go. And the application I've created is, is a typical Jakarta application. I have a data store, a relation database. I have a, a, a Jakarta persistence uh, to, to, to retrieve the data from the database. And I'm using an enterprise bean at my, as my business logic. And I'm using Jakarta REST and Jakarta JSON binding to produce a JSON output through a REST API. I also have a CDI extension that uh, prints a message in the log. How many are using CDI extensions or know about them? Yeah, yeah so, so a few of you. But so so it, it's not very common that you use it as an application developer. So I'll skip fairly quickly through the um, past the, the um, CDI extensions. But let, let's go and, and do this uh, uh, migration. So I have this. Uh, uh, I have a, a complete Duke application. Uh, it is here on E8. So I'm going to change this to uh, to run on on E9.1. Uh, and then I have the application. It's it's the same one as, as previously. It, it's just a a greeting, it's, uh, but it has a little bit more classes than the booty Duke. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm calling the the Duke service, uh, and and the Duke service. Uh, it has, has this uh, fine greeting method. It's a stateless session bin in this case. Uh, it has uh, a, a business logic that uh, finds everything from the repository then takes the first one or, uh, or else hard code. Uh, I have the, the finder method in uh, Jakarta Persistence that are using the criteria language to just uh, select everything from the database. And that's it. The entity in itself, it's, uh, it's very simple. It has a primary a key, a message, and an email field. And uh, the, the uh, CDI extension is just looking for the uh, at Duke's annotation, which I've put here on the, uh, on, on the, the RESTful endpoint. It just looks for it and, and prints the message in the log. So let's uh, do an upgrade to um, uh, E9.1. And uh, the, the Maven coordinates are the same, so the only thing I have to change is the um, it's the, the version number, and uh, reload this one. And then I can, can do the uh, IntelliJ magic to, to take the, the uh, migrate packages from Java to Jakarta. I'll, I'll just do the complete Duke and do the refactoring. So yeah, I'm done. That's how easy it is. So now we can see everything here is, is, is on the Jakarta namespace. So, so that's the code, and it does only change the thing you're, you're needing. But there are more. When I've done the, 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 uh, the, the, the code, I also have to uh, check if I have any XML uh, files in, in my system. And, and in my case, I'm using a persistent XML. And the persistent XML, uh, uh, in my case, I'm using the namespace you can see from, from the JCP here. And what we've done with Jakarta E is to change this namespace. So, so if you use, you don't have to use namespaces in your XML. It's a good practice to do so because then you can validate it. But if, if you are using uh, namespaces in your XML, you need to change this. And we've changed to HTTPS, and we are calling it Jakarta.e. So it's, it's super simple to remember. You just have to remember to change it uh, all, all across. And, and this is also something you can just uh, uh, you can just copy from uh, from the spec document or uh, find an online resource. It's not, not something you, you actually need to remember, uh, but but it, it, if if you do it manually like I'm doing here now, it's um, it, it, it is um, did I misspell something here? Yeah, there. So 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 uh, and 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 a practice we have inherited from EE is to 
uh, always have the version number in the, uh, in the file name. So, so that's all you have to do. And now we can see it validates there and says, hey, you're using the wrong version. So, so, so now, I, now I can actually uh, have some validation done. And you can see it's only the jcp.org that has to be changed to, to jcp.de. The next thing I need to change is, am I using some Java X prefix properties? And if you're using some properties, and you can probably see two of them here in, in the screen. I'm, I'm using Java X persistent schema generation to generate the test data for this application. This is not something you use in, in production, the, the drop and create and, and insert greetings or whatever. Uh, but, but for test purposes, it's good. And you can use, there are lots of other properties. So if you're using some Java X prefix properties, you may have to change them to Jakarta. Uh, Jakarta. And uh, uh, the, the schema change here will actually give you code completion and, and give you uh, help to do it correctly. So, so any XML file, if you have web XML, application XML, or, or something else XML in your system that are defined by the Jakarta specs, you may have to change these, uh, the namespaces. And the, the properties can be an everywhere. They can be in the database, they can be in a, in a, in a property file, or, or you can concatenate strings or something. So that is the last step I, I, I told uh, uh, was to verify dynamic content. So if you're concatenating strings or anything, you may have to, to, to fix that. Uh, if you're building properties or class names or something. One thing also, if you're using CDI extensions or, or, or other stuff that are using some bootstrapping files. In, in CDI extensions, the way you bootstrap them is to have a, a file called Java X Enterprise Inject SPI extension. And you have the fully qualified name of your extension class here. And wh what you need to do there is to change this one. And, and uh, it, it's probably not hard to guess what the name is going to be, because you just replaced Java X with Jakarta. So, so, so if you're using CDI extensions, this is something also you may need to remember. So now I should be fairly much done. So let's deploy this one to Clash V6, which is uh, 89. Take the complete duke and deploy it. And let's see if it works. Uh, deploy. So you can see here it says, hi there. That's the log file from the CDI uh, extension. So that's picked up and it's running. And let's go and see the um, actual output. And I think that's this one, 882 on the complete dick. And it says, how did Jakarta E9 with uh, Java 17? But I haven't talked to 17 yet. So this is kind of also the, the dynamic things you, you may need to change. So let's go 17. And, and notice also I'm doing it with EE9. So, so, so the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll do is I, I just don't want to generate these uh, uh, test data uh, anymore. So I'll just comment out these lines so, so I keep the data in the database. Or it doesn't really matter. But um, let's introduce a, something that came after 11 and within 17. And uh, uh, first, I need to upgrade the POM file. So I use Java 17. So what I'm going to do there is to take out. 8, and introduce 17. Reload my palm. And uh, let's introduce a record. So I'll, I'll use a record. I call it Duke's greeting record. Records came in 16. But it's sort of when you upgrade to 17 from 11, you kind of start using them. So, so I, I um, want to have a record. I want to have a message. And I want to have a so that, that, that's going to be my, my uh, record. And uh, if you remember from my, my uh, RESTful endpoint, what I'm doing here is to return the, the entity. And I'm exposing sort of the database to my, through my REST API. And that's not a good practice. So let's have a DTO or data object or data access object, something in between there. And let's use this record. So I'll return the record through uh, the REST endpoints. That also means that I, I have to fix my, my find greetings method to also return a record. And, and this is where the magic is going to happen. When I've found the first one in the database, I'm going to map this to a record. So I'm going to take the, the entity from the database, and I'm going to create a new uh, greeting record. I'm going to take the message, and I'm going to create a, a, a new local date now. And I'm also going to fix the, the hard-coded in case I don't find anything in the database. And the date 
shouldn't be undefined, it should be local date now. So what I've done now is to, to, to retrieve the entity from the database and then I map it to a data object, which is a record, and return it. And let's uh, run this one in Glassfish. Read deploy. And we're up and running. And let's see what's happening. And it's empty. Why? What happened there? If I say that the JSON binding implementation in Glassfish in that isn't supposed to support 17, so it doesn't know what a record is. And it's, it's, it's waiting for a Java bean. And Java bean have getters. And there are no getters, or the getters in, in this record is, is actually just called date and message. So it's, it's, it's looking for a method called get something. So I, I can trick the system and just call this property get message. And I can call this get date. It's ugly, I know. But uh, that, that's, that's the way you can sort of trick the system to get 17 to work with this uh, version of Glassfish. Yeah. Let's uh, go one step further and go 9 to 10, and then also demo the core profile. So I have, have my application here. Uh, I want to upgrade to 10. So I'll just take this. And this is also very easy. I'll just change from 9 to 10 and reload. And I'm done. Because it, there are no namespaces, no, no other changes, no, nothing. So now I can deploy it to a Glassfish, uh, Glassfish 10 application server, which is Glassfish 7. And uh, deploy it there. And it's up and running. Let's look at how it looks to complete the. And, and now you can see it, it, it returns the same, but only it says, how did you carry E9? And so that, that is something I, I may have to change in, in the database. But you can also notice, now the, the, it says the JSON properties are get data and, and get message. So in Glassfish 7, the JSON B implementation is, is correct. So, so I can take my ugly hack and just call it message and date. And uh, then it, uh, it should work fine. Date the message. So going from 9 to 10 is, is a no-brainer. Going from 8 to 10 is also easy. It's just the same, same as, as going from, from, um, uh, from, from uh, 8 to 9. You can go to 8 to 10. So, so, um, so, that, so that is sort of a, a fairly easy step to go. What, what I, I'm going to show you here is uh, the, the uh, new extension API in Core Profile. And what I need to change here in my application, first of all, Core Profile doesn't have anything about uh, EJBs or persistence. So, so I just remove that. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll look at the, the extension and see what you need to change if you have a CDI extension in your system. Since it's not very common, I'll go fairly quickly with this. So I have the, the Core Duke application. And in my POM file here, you can see I'm using the, the core API. So I'm not using web or, or the platform. It's just the core. Uh, and the application itself is, is exactly the same as the one I had. Uh, and it has this um, uh, uh, the, the uh, greeting here. And, and the actually service is, is just hard coding it. So, so I don't use any EJBs or anything. And, and the record is just the same. Uh, What's changed there is the CDI extension. And if I look at the previous, I'll just take minimize this. If I look at the extension class here, so this is the, the portable extension that is from, from, from uh, uh, Jakarta 9. And you see, I, I implement an, an, an interface called extension. And it's the Jakarta Enterprise Inject SPI extension. And, and it has this process annotated type, it's got, it kind of has a, a signature here. I, I, can, I, I can do other kind of lifecycle things, but in this case, I'm, I'm just observing the Duke's 
annotation. So this is a, the, the, the standard portable way, and this is the way you should do if you're using anything else than core profile. If I go to and look at the extension class in, in, in core profile, I'm now implementing the build compatible extension. So it's not an extension anymore, it's a build compatible. And you can see the, the package name has changed. And the interface has changed a little. So, so this is a more modern interface uh, using annotations for the life cycle. So I have different, this is the enhancement phase of, of CDI. There are different discovery and et cetera. I think there are five or six different phases here. But this is the enhancement phase. I'm, I'm, and I'm looking for the Duke's annotation. And I'm doing the same output. So, so it's a little bit different to, uh, to uh, the interface uh, to program against, but, but when you get it, it's fairly well documented. And the only thing you need to do is, is sort of make sure you implement this build compatible extension. And you need to make sure that the, the bootstrapping file that in the portable extension were called Jakarta Enterprise Inject SPI extension, you don't need to remember that because it's, it's the package name here. That's the file name. And luckily, that's the same for, for core. So, so here, the, the file is called uh, Jakarta Enterprise Inject Build Compatible SPI Build Compatible Extension. And that is not something you go around and remember. So, so what, what you, you would use is the fully qualified package name of, of the uh, Build Compatible Extension the API. That's the file name. So you can just copy it from there if you don't remember it or read the documentation. Other than that, it's, uh, it's, um, it's exactly the same application. So, if I deploy this one to Wildfly, which is uh, implementing core profile, and Wildfly will be the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the application server will be used to ratify the specification. So I'm deploying it here. And in the log, you should see here, it says the hi there Duke message from the, uh, from the uh, extension. And uh, also, it shouldn't be very surprising that uh, is it 8083? It should be this one. That it shows uh, the message as well. So, core profile is, uh, is um, in the in the in the usual application you're using. If you're just using this set of API, it's it's basically the same as with the uh, web profile. You just cannot use persistence and that other stuff. So this is the surprise demo. And Sushi, we're on the fish theme. And this is a demo of, of uh, uh, one of the fishes that are a member of the Jakarta E, and that is uh, Payara. And Payara has a, a cool service called Payara Cloud. And I'll show you how simple it is to deploy a Jakarta E application to cloud. You don't need any YAML. You don't need to do know what Kubernetes is. You don't even know need how to, uh, how, what a cloud is. You just need to be able to open a web browser. So, so it's very, very simple. And I'll, I'll make this big. So what I have here is the Payara Cloud. And I've created a namespace. And, and this, or to create this namespace, this more or less just create a namespace, give it a name. That's the only property. That's the only thing I've done. And if I want to, to deploy an application here, I take this, I, I click the uh, upload application. I see if I'm logged out of this one, or do I have internet? Yeah. So I say upload application. Choose an application, and I have a, 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 a file called Sushi Duke, and I say deploy immediately. I can give it more options, and that's a name. But I, I've named the the, the, the it, uh, it will pick the, the file name if I don't give it a name. So I'll, I'll just go with that, and it's deploying. And and uh, what it's doing now is to set up everything for you in in Azure, I think. But I don't need to know. I just open this web page, and I have. Here and here, I can I, I can look at some logs and configuration and stuff. But the configuration is it's basically just a name. So l let's those who can this know this handle it for us. And then I, I can go here, uh, open the application, and the endpoint is um, uh, as with all the others, hello, and it says, "Duke's in for sushi." So so that's how simple you deploy a Jakarta application to to the web. You just throw the WAR file up there, and let those who know how to configure it, configure it. You don't need this Kubernetes stuff. That's probably what's underneath, but you as developers don't need it. Let's look at what's beyond Jakarta 10. And beyond Jakarta 10, uh, we are 
planning for Jakarta 11. That's not a surprise, that after 10 is 11. And the work with that starts now. And uh, uh, we are, uh, this is speculation from my side. Should we go for 17 in, on the APIs, or should we keep 11? Should we make it volunteer to the specs? I don't know. You maybe know. You have the input. So this is the time to come with your input. If you're saying, go 17, and everybody in the community says that, then yes, that's what we're going to do. If nobody says anything, then you're leaving it to the vendors to decide. So, 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 so voice your opinion and say, which Java 11 should we use in the APIs? What I can assure you is that when we go live with this, the TCK will run on 17, and anything that is is going to be the LTS at that time, and most likely that will be 21. So we will be able to use 21 features in the applications if you want to, but, but the question is, we have to decide, it's kind of set, should we raise the API level or should we stay on 11? What we're going to do, that's up to, to us as a community to decide. There is a new spec coming, Jakarta config, which standardized portable configuration from environment-aware sources, so you can inject configurations. You probably know this uh, from microprofile uh, config and, and others. But it will be a standard way of configuring your applications in a portable way. Uh, Jakarta MVC has been uh, a standalone uh, specification for a long time, and it, it may still be a standalone. But as you probably know, the trend is that server-side rendering is coming back. So maybe it's time to take a look at MVC again and see if it has somewhere it can fit into the Jakarta EE other than being a standalone spec. It works perfectly fine with the existing application servers, but maybe it should be part of the standard API as well. That is up to you as a community to voice and say if you want that, and it's super simple to use. If you know Jakarta REST, it's just a couple of annotations more, like the at control or at view, and then you're good to go with Jakarta MVC. Jakarta NoSQL has been going on for a long time. They also need some attention, some help. Uh, they are standardizing integration with NoSQL databases. So, so this is something that is probably very useful. And uh, we should probably do some effort there to get it into Jakarta E11. Jakarta RPC is a brand new specification that will standardize gRPC with Jakarta E. So you have a standard way of, of, of using G, uh, gRPC in Jakarta. That work has just started. I don't think there has been a single message on the mailing list yet. So, so if you're a, an expert in gRPC, join them and, and help it out to get started. Just ask, what's happening? Can we do something? Where do we start to write? Where is the GitHub repository? That you can find on this page, specification slash RPC. that are linked to the GitHub and, and the project there. Jakarta Data. Maybe we'll start the creation review for this today. So this is, it had gone through community review. It's a proposal going up, and we'll standardize the repository pattern for data access. Think spring data or delta plus spike data. You just create an interface, and, and everything else is generated for you. So, so Jakarta data is a new specification. Hopefully, we can get it into 11. This is just me. Should we create some functions, serverless, serverless cloud functions? You name it. Do we need it? Is it a good idea? I don't know. But uh, join the mailing list and say what you think. If you like Jakarta Function, just write about it. So to sum up, E9 is still the version that is out there, or none of one. Uh, the current version, uh, that is all about the namespace switch. Jakarta 10 is coming hopefully next month. A lot of new changes, a lot of new stuff. Uh, and uh, go to Jakarta E webpage and uh, read about the specifications. Core profile, brand new, smaller runtimes, uh, compiled to native. Uh, check out the implementations when they are published so you can, you can start uh, playing with it. We're on 11 now, uh, and, but you can use 17 or 18 or 19 or 20 when that comes, uh, if you want. For more information, Jakarta.ee is a web page where, you can, where it's a starting point for everything. 
uh, we have this uh, blog aggregator where you can, if you write a blog about Jakarta technologies or something related, it doesn't have to be about Jakarta. You can, if you have a Spring blog, you can, you can get it published there. And uh, it, 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 it's very simple. You just go to that page and click, uh, I want to add my blog. And, uh, and it will pick up your RSS feed and uh, you'll get published. I have a weekly hashtag Jakarta E. The demo code is on GitHub. You'll uh, find the, the tutorials and all the, the demos there. Check out Tanya's presentation later today, 2.30, uh, to see how you can get involved and all the practi practicalities around how to get, get involved. And that's all I had. Thank you very much. And I have four minutes for questions.